Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. While advanced users may want to directly create a new mail merge document, new users may find it easier to create a mail merge document by using the mail merge wizard in Word. This leads you through the process of creating a mail merge document step by step. To start a mail merge in Word by using the mail merge wizard, first click the mailings tab in the ribbon. Then click the Start Mail Merge button in the Start Mail Merge button group. Then choose the Step-by-Step -step Mail Merge Wizard command from the Buttons drop-down menu. Doing that then opens the Mail Merge Task pane at the right side of the document window. Answer the questions posed to you in each pane and then click the Next hyperlink that appears at the bottom of the pane to continue through the Mail Merge process until you are finished. Under the Select Document Type section in the first screen of the Mail Merge Wizard, Word asks what type of document are you working on. Select the Option button for the type of Mail Merge document you want to create. The choices that follow in the next few steps of the Mail Merge Wizard will vary slightly depending upon which choice you make in this screen. After making your selection, click the Next Starting Document hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to continue. Under the Select Starting Document section in the next pane of the Mail Merge Wizard, Word asks how do you want to set up your document. Note that the choices vary slightly depending upon the type of document you chose to create in the previous pane. If you have a blank document open that you want to use as the merge document, then select the Use the Current Document choice. If you select this option, then click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to continue. Alternatively, to use one of the pre-made mail merge templates available in Word, select the Start from a Template option. Then click the Select Template command in the middle of the task pane to open the Select Template dialog box. If you have a document open that contains existing content, a warning pop-up then appears. Click OK in this pop-up box to delete the current contents of your document. Alternatively, to save the contents of the document instead, click Cancel, Save Your Document, open a new blank document, and then reopen the Mail Merge Wizard. In the Select Template dialog box, select the Mail Merge template to use. You can modify this template if necessary to better suit your needs. After selecting a template, click OK, and then click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to continue. Alternatively, to use a saved Word document as the merge document, then select the Start from Existing Document option in the Select Starting Document section of the Mail Merge task pane. In the Start from Existing section that then appears, click the More Files option. Then click the Open button to launch the Open dialog box. Use this dialog box to browse for the Word document to use. After finding it, double-click the document in the Open dialog box to open it within the main document window. Then click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to continue. Note that if you had selected the Envelopes or Labels option back in the first screen of the Mail Merge Wizard, then the second screen shows different options than the ones just mentioned. If you selected Envelopes, then two options appear in the task pane. If the currently open document isn't a standard envelope, you can select the Change Document Layout option and then click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to continue to the Envelope Options dialog box. Alternatively, you can click the Envelope Options command in the task pane to open the Envelope Options dialog box if you prefer. The Envelope Options dialog box contains options for printing envelopes. This is where you select the envelope size to use. You can set the envelope size by choosing an option from the Envelope Size drop-down. If you don't see the envelope size you need, then select the Custom Size option from the Envelope Size drop-down to open the Envelope Size dialog box. Then enter the width and height of your envelope in inches into the spinner boxes or use the spinner buttons to change the envelope size. 
Then click the OK button to save your custom envelope size and return to the Envelope Options dialog box. If desired, to set the display of the font for both the delivery address and return address for your envelopes, click the Envelope Options tab in the Envelope Options dialog box, and then click the Font button in either the Delivery Address or Return Address section to open the Envelope Address dialog box. Then use the options that appear on the Font and Advanced tabs to change the envelope's font settings. These tabs should seem familiar as they contain the same font formatting options as the font dialog box you learned about back in Chapter 6, Font Formatting. After setting the font options for the envelope's delivery address and or return address, click the OK button to save your changes and return to the Envelope Options dialog box. To set envelope printing options, click the Printing Options tab. Then use the buttons and checkbox there to set other options like the printer feed and printer tray options. After setting your desired options, click the OK button to return to the Mail Merge Wizard. If necessary, then click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to continue to the third screen in the Mail Merge Wizard. If you selected the Labels option in the first screen of the Mail Merge Wizard, then the second screen shows options like the ones for envelopes. If the currently open document isn't a standard label, then you can select the Change Document Layout option and then click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to continue and open the Label Options dialog box. Alternatively, you can simply click the Label Options command in this task pane to directly open the Label Options dialog box if you prefer. This dialog box contains the labels printing options. First, indicate if you are using continuous feed printers or page printers by choosing the appropriate option in the printer information section. If you select the page printers option, you may need to select from which tray in the printer to print the labels by choosing the desired tray from the tray dropdown. In the label information section, select the manufacturer of your labels from the label vendors dropdown. Then select the label type from the product number list. You can see the details of a selected label by clicking the details button. A dialog box then opens and shows the size, margins, and pitch for the selected labels. The paper size and the number of labels per sheet also appears in this dialog box. While you can change these settings, it is not recommended when working with pre-made labels. When finished, click the OK button to return to the Label Options dialog box. If you don't see your labels you have, or if you prefer to create your own labels, then click the New Label button to open the Label Details dialog box. It is important to note that the information you enter into this dialog box must exactly match the information for your label sheets. If the measurements are off, your labels will not print properly and you must start over. First enter a name for your label into the Label Name field. Then use the spinner boxes and the drop-down in this dialog box to create your new label. After entering all the information, then click the OK button to save your new label and return to the Label Options dialog box. After selecting your label type, then click the OK button to return to the task pane. If necessary, then click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to continue to the third screen in the Mail Merge Wizard. After selecting the document to use as your Mail Merge document, you must then choose the data source for the Mail Merge document in the Select Recipients pane of the Mail Merge Wizard. If you already have a list, like an Excel spreadsheet, to use for the Merge document, then select the Use an Existing List option at the top of the task pane. If you choose this option, then click the Browse hyperlink in the middle of the task pane to open the Select Data Source dialog box. This dialog box opens and displays the contents of a default folder, so you may need to navigate to the folder in which you store the data source. After finding the list to use as the data source, double-click it to select it and return to the task pane. 
Note that you may need to select a specific table from the database or select a specific sheet from a workbook if you are using either an Access database or Excel workbook as the data source. After selecting the data source to use, then the Mail Merge Recipients dialog box then opens. You can use this dialog box to filter and sort the recipient information. We'll look at using this dialog box in a separate lesson. However, after that part is done, you can then click the OK button in the Mail Merge Recipients dialog box to close it and return to the task pane. Alternatively, to use information from an Outlook Contacts folder versus using an existing list, then select the Option button for Select from Outlook Contacts in the Select Recipient screen in the task pane. Doing this then opens Microsoft Outlook. In Outlook, you then select the Contacts folder to use as the data source. After selecting the Contacts folder to use, the Mail Merge Recipients dialog box then appears, where you can filter and sort the data in the data source. Once again, we'll cover using this dialog box in a separate lesson as it is extensive. After finishing using the dialog box, you can then click the OK button to return to the task pane. Alternatively, to create a new Mail Merge Recipient list, you can select the Type a New List option in the Select Recipient screen in the Mail Merge task pane. Then click the Create button. Word then prompts you to create a new list for the mail merge in the New Address List dialog box. We'll cover how to create and edit a data source on the fly like this in a separate lesson. However, after creating this list, you can then click the OK button to open the Mail Merge Recipients dialog box. As mentioned before, you use that dialog box to filter and sort the data for the Mail Merge document. This is also covered in a separate lesson. After sorting and filtering the data using this dialog box, you can then click the OK button to return to the task pane. After you set your data source for the merge document, then click the Next hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to proceed to the next step. In the next step of the Mail Merge Wizard, you then enter the static or unchanging document information directly into the Mail Merge document. After that, then use the links in the task pane to insert data fields from your data source into the document at the desired positions. To insert information from your data source, click the More Items hyperlink in the task pane to open the Insert Merge Field dialog box. Select the option for Database Fields at the top of the dialog box to show a list of the available fields from your data source. Click the name of a field to insert into the selected position in the document. Then click the Insert button at the bottom of the dialog box to insert it. Alternatively, if you simply need to insert some address information, you can instead click the Address Block link in the task pane to open the Insert Address Block dialog box. Then select which address elements to insert. Then click the OK button to insert the selected address elements. In addition, if needed, to choose from several letter openings for your mail merge letter documents, you can click the Greeting Line link in the task pane to open the Insert Greeting Line dialog box. Then choose from several letter openings for your mail merge letter documents. You can then click the OK button to return to the task pane. Also, note that if you are creating labels, you only need to create the fields in the first label. This is the label that appears in the upper left corner. You can then click the Update All Labels button that appears in the task pane to copy the fields you inserted into the first label to all the other label areas in the Mail Merge document. After creating your merge document, Click the next hyperlink at the bottom of the Mail Merge task pane to continue. The next screen in the task pane lets you preview the merge results. 
To do this, click the double pointing chevrons at the top of the task pane to view the merge results before merging the data. After previewing the information to ensure that the merge is performed correctly, you can then click the next button at the bottom of the task pane to continue. To then print the mail merge document, click the Print hyperlink at the top of the task pane to open the Merge to Printer dialog box. In this dialog box, select the range of records in the data source to print. Then click the OK button to print the selected records. Alternatively, to make individual changes to different letters or labels, etc. within the merge results, you can instead click the Edit Individual Labels or Edit Individual Letters link that appears in the middle of the task pane to open the Merge to New Document dialog box. In this dialog box, once again select the range of records to merge into a new document and then click the OK button. Doing this creates the output document that is often created during the merge process. In the New Document window that then opens, you can change the individual letters if desired. You can then print this new output document along with any individual editing changes you made in order to complete the merge. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.